So this action roguelike bullet hell game Fatal Zone enters early access in two days and I'm going to attempt a first impressions video on it. If feedback's good, I might do a follow up. I'm not too familiar with the bullet hell genre. The last game I remember playing like this was that Call of Duty arcade minigame, which kind of looks like this. One main difference is you can't control where you're shooting. It feels like the dude shoots at the closest target. As you kill zombies, they drop little green things on the ground, which you pick up to fill this meter and once it's full, you get to choose a temporary upgrade for this run. The upgrade goes away after the run's over, but you do get to keep the resource you found which are used for base upgrades. I've done a few runs and mainly upgraded the HQ to level 4, which is required to upgrade pretty much all the other buildings to level 4. Like the recruitment center, we can upgrade this to level 3 and it increases the number of available mercs that we can hire, but I don't think that's too necessary right now because we do have 4 ready to go. Although from doing runs earlier, they do have mutations which lower their stats, but some of them can be positive, like this one lowers reload speed by 1%, this one increases speed by 4%, and HP by 18 So you gotta kinda decide, do you wanna treat these mutations for money so you don't have to deal with all these penalties, or do you not really mind because some of the mutations could be potentially really good? And like this girl has this mutation which makes her smarter, I'm not sure what that does exactly. She only gets minus 5% HP which is not that bad, like this guy has 3 more mutations. I'm not sure what reroll does. Seems like that could be pretty good. And Zach has just one, which is lowering his stats by a lot. It's weird because he only has one mutation, as does Ruth, but she gets way less penalty than Zach. I'm not sure what's going on with that whole thing. Might be something with her class, maybe? Like, she can deal with more mutations? So as I'm editing this, I realize there's a heal button, which I think can cure all penalties, maybe free of charge. Originally, I just thought the more mutations you have, the more penalties you get but no, I don't think that's the case. I'm now guessing people just get injured on their runs and after their runs, you gotta spend time to heal them up. I also did upgrade the workshop to level four, so we could potentially buff someone's equipment. It's really expensive to buff up Bruce. Mike's is really cheap. Vincent's is a bit more expensive. Zach's is the same. I don't know why Roos is so expensive. She uses the shotgun, which didn't seem crazy good. I really like the spear, which is the cheapest upgrade anyways. So let's upgrade that. And then I guess we'll just go out with all his mutations because we don't have enough money to treat them anyways. And then before we do go out, based on your level, which Mike is level two, you can do upgrades at the gym. So Mike starts with one revive, which we haven't used yet. And then he can go either 10% physical damage or five armor, which I think five armor is quite a lot. So I just went for the armor. And then yeah, without further ado, we'll head to the gate. And if we upgrade the gates, which we can't do yet, we don't have enough money for it. If we did upgrade the gate, we could go to different places, but for now we'll just stay in the Great Forest. We start near three chests, which is a pretty good start. I'm not sure why he's attacking three times. Usually when you start out, you only get two spear thrusts. For some reason, we're getting three. So it must be because his spear is now level four, I think. We got our first upgrade. I think at the start, it's really good to go for damage. We're just going to go for shocker. And you want more damage so you can start getting more upgrades. And I thought the shocker thing is like a grenade that does damage, but I guess it just stuns. Which in hindsight, I should have taken something that just does raw damage. And here we go. Frag grenade does damage. It could also make the spear do one more projectile, but I think it's better just to go for more weapons rather than upgrading the ones you have. Because the spear could thrust one more time, but like... I'd rather have a bunch of grenades going out everywhere. These zombies are really easy to uh, kill, by the way. And it's fine to take a little bit of damage, especially at the start, because chances are you're going to come across some HP regen. And then I think this guy actually regens as he kills stuff. Pretty sure I just saw the health meter go up a little bit. We could try to kill that boss too. I'm not sure about this start. You should just be running for more treasure boxes. And here we go. Take the drone here, I would say, just for extra damage. And the drone's pretty cool. You gotta keep the target on the boss. Although, while I'm trying to position that target, I am taking extra damage. Which again, I don't really care too much about taking a little bit of damage at the start. The amount of mutations you get is not based on how much damage you take, I don't believe. I think it's just how long you stay in the run. The longer you are in the run, the more mutations you get. And like right now, we could actually dip out on the helicopter. Grenade launcher is pretty good. The helicopter is to the southeast and we could dip out on that, but I think we're okay. We got another upgrade. I would say the frag grenade may be better than the drone. I feel like the drone's kind of situational. And we got long arms, which combos with the frag grenade to create enough for everyone. When the frag grenade explodes, each grenade bursts into a number of fragments that penetrate enemies. 
on pretty much immediately after that we get another upgrade let's just go for another frag grenade because we have the perk for that so uh yeah the frag grenade is gonna be doing a lot of damage and we got another perk let's go for reload speed i guess I think that helps everything that we have so far like including the frag grenade it might just be the spear and we got another perk cheese we'll just go quick hands because i think it actually might just affect the spear I'm not 100 cents. And yeah, we got a bunch of perks now, so I think just look for chests and try to get more resources to bring back to the base. And then whenever we run into a boss, I'm gonna try to kill it as well. We got a boss zombie over here. Then grab the chest as well, might as well. Another chest over here. And another one. Boss down. I think you get a ton of XP for killing the boss. And this upgrade combos with the spear to get Ares Wrath. We have a 10% chance to get healed when we do damage with the spear. Got another perk. I don't think the movement speed is necessary. Let's we'll go for increased luck. We got another one. Let's go for the ball. And that creates this little ball. Or two balls, I guess. I'm not sure if this guy gets like a bonus with that upgrade. Because I'm pretty sure you only get one ball with a different class. I think whenever we see the frag grenade, we'll just keep going for that because of the enough for everyone perk. Just keep buffing the damage of that thing. And maybe it will upgrade the shrapnel damage. And yeah, I passed on another helicopter, so we'll have one coming in four minutes to extract us. I'm still trying to figure out when the best time to go for the helicopter is. I feel like if you're in a good spot and like your health is full, just skip on the helicopter, I guess, and keep going. You can see that the game is getting harder and harder as time passes. We're getting more powerful zombies. And I guess the question is, is the build that you're making keeping up with the difficulty increase? If it's not, then you should probably dip out in the helicopter early. If it is, then keep going. Get the frag grenade upgraded to seven, I think now. It's dealing tons of damage. You could probably just own the boss, actually. Just a frag grenade. Jeez, we got another frag grenade upgrade. I wanna see how much damage it does to this boss. It will actually hit the boss. There we go, I think it hit the boss just now. I can't tell if it's actually hitting the boss or not. These zombies are really tanky. Fragrant is not even one-shotting them. And there we go, we got that boss and first I guess we gotta choose a perk. Let's go for increased damage. We got another perk. Let's go for more luck, I guess. Yeah, sometimes it will suck in all the zombie shards that you killed and you'll get a bunch of level ups in a row. Let's go for a spear increase. You can see it's just sucking him in from I don't know where. But uh, yeah, let's grab this chest, which is gonna be another perk. I think it's just a random perk. Another frag grenade. So we got it to level eight. I think that's the max level it goes. So we got another increased damage perk. And then in this chest, we got an upgrade to the grenade explosion perk. So the grenades are just exploding the entire map pretty much. At this point, we're just going to go for increased damage. We got two increased damage perks in a row. Holy crap. I think I just saw this boss get two-shotted by grenades. And the boss ends up dropping three perks. The grenade launcher, the long arms perk, and rabbit's foot perk. There was kind of a little warning that went off pretty recently. And I'm not sure if that's basically saying we need to get the heck out of here. But as you can see, there is an insane amount of zombies trying to run us down. We're getting more and more perks for killing more and more zombies. We'll take that. And we got the thing where we're sucking up all the zombie XP. But yeah, I'm thinking maybe we should go on the next chopper. Or we could just keep going. I mean, we're not really in much danger. Well, I'm seeing some new zombies I've never seen before. Some shield zombies. I feel like all of a sudden we're going to run into some super crazy zombie and our health is just going to spike. This is getting a little bit scary. There's so many of these shield zombies. Feels like we don't really have much room to maneuver here. 
We'll say we've killed 10,000 zombies, which is way more than I've ever come close to on like the four or five runs I've done. I think in 30 seconds we're just gonna get out because uh, yeah, this is a little bit too much. I think we actually might be screwed here. Might have pushed it too far. 16 seconds left till the helicopter comes. Not sure what we get to save us here. I mean, let's just go for the stun, I guess. For the CC. I should have leveled that one up more, I think, since we have so much grenade damage. Ooh, treasure chest. Not that I can really. Oh. Jeez, we gotta somehow get to the helicopter. We do have a revive as well. So maybe we'll have to use that here. No, we're okay. I don't know what that was. It killed like all the zombies on the screen. Wow, that was a pretty intense finish. Definitely evacuating. And we killed 12,000 zombies, 8 bosses, collected 2,700 coins. We reached raid level 40, held out for 12 minutes. And in total, we've collected 8,000 coins, taken 5,000 damage. During that raid, we got some mutations. Stun duration increased by 21%, I think. Three revives, which we've used none so far. We already went over the reload speed, and the increased speed, and the HP, and then greed 59%. So I wonder if we get more coins, which is huge, because coins seems to be the main limiting factor as to how high we can upgrade our stuff. Like, we can improve the HQ if we had enough coins, because we have plenty of the other resources. We could actually just improve the HQ, and that would allow us to improve the workshop, and then we could get better weapons and armor for people to start out with during runs. Or maybe we should just cure all the guy's mutations, because he has so many negative stats from having too many mutations. I feel like in this dude's next run, with all these mutations, he would just get annihilated. It costs 500 to cure each individually. We'd probably cure the speed one and the reload speed one which we can see what that does actually and i guess we can only cure one at a time and we gotta wait maybe till after our next run to have some of these penalties go away i think if i do a follow-up video maybe we'll try out the sword guy or i could also show off the shotgun or pistol guys as well vincent's almost level two and if we tried arthur we'd have to start over at level one so it would take longer to get up to rank three perks which this one's pretty good increases hp by 75 percent speed by 15 and aoe by 30 imagine if we had that during the last run with all those grenade explosions that would have been crazy 